And we have breaking news. The judge has dismissed some of the charges against former President Trump in the Georgia election interference case. You know that every single ballot she did went to Biden. You know that, right? Do you know that, by the way, Brett? Every single ballot that she did through the machine at uh, early, early in the morning went to Biden. Did you know that, Ryan? That's not accurate, Mr. President. Huh. What is accurate? Because those numbers are so wrong. I personally think they're corrupt as hell. But we don't need that because all we have to do, Clayton, is find 11,000 plus votes. So we don't need that. I'm not looking to, to shake up the whole world. We won Georgia easily. We won it by hundreds of thousands of votes. But if you go by basic, simple numbers, we won it easily. Easily. And Stacey Abrams is laughing about, you know, she's going around saying these guys are dumber than a rock. What she's done to this party is unbelievable, I tell you. And I only ran against her once, and that was with a guy named Brian Kemp. And I beat her. And if I didn't run, Brian wouldn't have had even a shot, either in the general or in the primary. He was dead, dead as a doornail. He never thought he had a shot at either one of them. What a schmuck I was. But that's the way it is. That's the way it is. Uh, I would like you to, uh, uh, for the attorneys on my I'd like you to perhaps meet with Ryan ideally tomorrow, because I think we should come to a resolution of this before the election. Otherwise, you're going to have you're going to have people just not voting. They don't want to vote. They hate the state. They hate the governor, and they hate the secretary of state. I will tell you that right now. And the only people that like you are people that will never vote for you. You know that, Brad, right? They like you, you know. They like you. They can't believe what they found. They want more people like you. So, look, uh, can you get together tomorrow? And, Brad, we just want the truth. It's simple. And uh, and everyone's going to look very good if the truth comes out. It's okay. it take a little while. But let the truth come out. The and the, tr- the real truth is I won by 400,000 votes at least. That's the real truth. But we don't need 400,000 votes. We need uh, less than 2,000 votes. So in this ruling that our team is pouring over right now, Diane, we've learned that Judge McAfee has dismissed six counts of this indictment, most of which has to do with efforts by Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, and a few of the other of the 19 defendants, not all, just some, to solicit executives of the Georgia government. So in one example here, count five, which has been dismissed from this indictment, our team writes that this was an effort uh, for Donald Trump uh, to solicit the Speaker of the House of Georgia to violate his oath of office, to declare a special session, and to appoint alternate electors. In a significant development in the Georgia criminal case against Donald Trump, Judge Scott McAfee dismissed six charges from the indictment while upholding most of the counts, including the central racketeering charge. But the dismissed charges were related to the alleged solicitation of the violation of oath by a public officer. And this McAfee ruled that these charges lacked sufficient detail about the underlying crimes being solicited, which is crucial for the defendants to prepare their defense. I. <laughs> Despite the dismissal of these specific charges, the judge emphasized that the conduct underlying them could still be considered as part of the broader racketeering charge. Trump now faces a total of 88 charges across four criminal indictments in various states. While the majority of these charges remain intact, legal analysts view the dismissal as a, a setback for prosecutors. Why are any of these being thrown out? I mean, we all heard him. We all heard this phone call. We've all heard this phone call. I won that state by hundreds of thousands of votes. Now, do you think it's possible that they uh, shredded ballots in uh, Fulton County? Because that's what the rumor is. And also that Dominion took out machines. Uh, That Dominion is really moving fast to get rid of their uh, machinery. Do you know anything about that? Because that's illegal. This is Ryan Germany. No, Dominion is not... Um, moved any machinery out of Fulton County. We're having well, but no, but but have they moved? Have they have they moved the inner parts of the machines and replaced them with other parts? No. You sure, Ryan? 
I'm sure. So this is not the news you want to hear if you're a, a non-MAGA lunatic, all right? Trump spent his entire life evading the law, and this is just the newest instance of him doing that. But will this push his trial date closer to the election? An overall part of Donald Trump's team's legal strategies across all his cages, cases have been to delay, delay, yeah. delay. So does this affect the timeline of this No, case? it doesn't, it's a great question. So basically what it does is, you know, think about um, the best way I compare it, think about almost like you're planning a dinner party, right? You're doing all your main courses, your meals, your everything else. It basically means we took the menu, we cut a couple things off, but we're still cooking. That's how I would compare this to people, right? We're still gonna have dinner. It's still gonna get served, if you will. I love how it compares what might be like the future death of American democracy to like, you know, a dinner party. These are technicalities. It's not all of the charges that were thrown away, but some of them were thrown away. And some of them as they relate to, you know, the famous phone call to Raffensperger. I really hope that the president who tried to overthrow our democracy in a democratic election does not get off on a technicality. That should be alarming anyone that even, he's even close to getting off of, on a technicality. So I went and interviewed people outside of the jailhouse where Donald Trump got his mugshot in at Atlanta. And that jail is infamous. Even MAGA, when I spoke to them, they knew how like awful the conditions were. Like people died from bed bugs, bed bugs. No one should die from bed bugs. Bed bugs infestation should not be that bad and ne neglected that people are dying from it. So like that, that the juxtaposition of someone who's clearly above the law due to wealth and influence and people going in for not trying to overturn the election and you know, dying of bed bugs. You know, that stark contrast is, I mean, that should terrify everyone. This is like a stark reminder of the systemic inequalities embedded within our justice system. You know, access to justice, equal justice, you know, it's not equal. And this case serves as you know, just another glaring example of how you know, privilege and connections can shield individuals from being held accountable for their actions, perpetuating a cycle of impunity for you know, the rich and powerful.